Welcome back to part two of our platinum refining series here. And here's our precipitate that we uh, got in part one. There's some crystals coming out of solution, probably ammonium chloride. Uh, what we're going to do now is reach in here. You'll see that the solution's got a little color to it. And we'll get a little bit of it on a filter paper. And we'll do a Stannis test. And you can see that we've got... Looks like a little bit of platinum in solution. A little bit of color going on in that solution. And a little bit of platinum left in solution. Now the temptation here is to put some more ammonium chloride in there and get the rest of it out. And uh, if it was gold, we could do that. Just add more precipitant and get 100% of the gold. But with platinum, totally different. We're just going to have to let that go. And I'll get that solution off of there. And we'll put it into a, a stock pot. Please understand that uh, I don't have a lot of experience with platinum. And I'm kind of making this up as I go. And what we're going to do now is pour this waste solution off into a waste beaker carefully. See if this is going to work. All right, ammonium hexachloroplatinate is usually a bright yellow color. And our precipitate here is a pink color. And it's got iridium in it, so I didn't see any iridium in our solution that we just poured off. So all the iridium, this is hydrochloric acid. We'll try rinsing with uh, hydrochloric acid here to see what happens can't use water to rinse the uh, rinse the precipitate off because this uh, precipitate is soluble in water this is hydrochloric acid now we'll just let this settle out and see if that helped us any. This hydrochloric acid rinse probably got a little bit of the ammonium chloride off of that precipitate for us. And it also proved that the hydrochloric acid will not put the precipitate back in solution. So now I've got a filter here. And what we're going to try to do is capture the precipitate now in this filter. I'm just going to pour it right on in here. Here we go. that some chunks of solid material in there quite sure what that is using hydrochloric acid to rinse it out for right now I've got the solution just pulling through by gravity I'm going to try to hook a little bit of vacuum up to see what happens here. I'm just fearful that we'll pull uh, pull too much of a vacuum and uh, cause the filter paper to fail. I don't know how this is going to react with that filter paper. So looks like we're doing okay. This seems to have worked 
fairly well for me. I've just got a slight vacuum going on in there. I'm going to rinse the precipitate with some hydrochloric acid. Pulled about a half a liter of hydrochloric acid through our precipitate. And now what we'll do, I'm going to take this funnel off of here and get it out of the way. And I've got a piece of filtered paper on a stick here. What we'll do is reach down in here and see what kind of metals we have in solution in this waste solution in here just see what we got not a whole lot of anything there's not a whole lot of anything in this solution so what we'll end up doing is just adding this probably that back here in this beaker to our stock pot what I think we're gonna do now is uh, take our precipitate I'm gonna get it back in this clean beaker And now what we'll do is add some hydrochloric acid to this. Oh, about 150 milliliters or so. Maybe 200. Now what I'm going to do, I think, is set this up on the heat. There's our precipitate hydrochloric acid. Set this up on the heat. Now I'll begin adding small doses of nitric acid until we get, uh, get this stuff to go back in solution. I've dissolved this precipitate before and this stuff is notorious for producing a runaway, uncontrolled, delayed reaction with the nitric. So we're gonna just add just a couple milliliters, that's about six milliliters. And then I'll put some gentle heat on here. And we'll just keep a close eye on this thing and try to redissolve the precipitate. This has been on for about 25 minutes. And what we're going to do is add a couple more shots of nitric acid. That's three milliliters. See how that's gonna do. I'm just gonna leave it at three for right now until I figure out what this is gonna do. Been on low heat for the last two hours. It's been two hours since we started this. I'm adding a little bit more nitric acid. Put it in slow. Yeah, I think it can take three milliliters, no problem. turned up on this now it's been on there about two and a half hours and I've added about 10 or 12 milliliters of nitric acid I can't tell if everything has gone into solution yet so what I'm gonna do is 
get a little bit more nitric in this pipette. About a one milliliter. Add that, see what happens here. this a swirl. Still looks like we got precipitate solids in there. I'm going to add another little squirt of nitric acid. About a milliliter. Here I'm adding a little bit more hydrochloric acid and nitric acid to form a little bit more aqua regia in the beaker. I'm at a loss here on how to determine when all the precipitate has been dissolved by the aqua regia. So I'm just going to have to do some overkill here and add more than I think I need and then hope for the best. Like I said, I have very little experience with platinum. And that's why for me right here, it's hard to judge whether or not I've got everything back in solution. The reason I'm doing this is to uh, do another precipitation to see if we can get the platinum salt cleaned up. And now that I've got that extra hydrochloric acid and extra nitric acid in there, what I'm going to do is just go ahead and crank the heat up and let the solution evaporate down to a syrup. Here I've got the solution evaporated down to a syrup. I'm going to add a little bit of hydrochloric acid, see if we get any fumes evolving that would indicate that we're driving off the excess nitrate. By heating it down to a syrup like that, that in and of itself I've found will serve uh, effectively to remove the excess nitrate. But we're gonna try to expel any that may be present by adding small charges of hydrochloric. And I don't see any fumes being evolved during this, so I'm just going to add the full charge of hydrochloric acid. And now what we'll do is we're going to pull it down off the heat and allow it to cool. I've got the solution cooled off, but before we filter, someone had asked about treating the waste. This is my stock pot. It's full of copper. And what we'll do is we're gonna add these toxic platinum waste solutions to this stock pot. And what happens in here is the platinum that's highly toxic and highly poisonous it cannot be poured down the drain so what we do is we add it to our uh, stock pot here and what will happen is the toxic metals will come out of solution on the copper in here here's another solution and cement out the copper will go into solution so there won't be any more toxic metals 
in the solution when we get done in this stock pot. All we'll have is copper in solution. The toxic metals will settle to the bottom. Here's a filter that we had yesterday. I'm just going to add that right in. And the metals cement out as a black powder and they fall down into the bottom of the stock pot and then we can recover them later on when we do a stock pot refining video here's one more beaker it's got a little bit of platinum solution in it so this is what we do with the uh, the toxic waste we pour it into the stock pot and cement those metals out onto the copper down here in the stock pot once all the precious metals have cemented out onto the copper in here I'll transfer the copper solution into my waste treatment bucket full of iron in that bucket the copper will cement out as metallic copper on the iron and the iron will go into solution and then we treat the acidic iron solution prior to disposal. I'll get this out of the way and what we'll do now is get set up to filter our platinum solution. Still got some solids in here because if you remember correctly we had the filtered paper in here that sure does look like some more of our precipitate that hasn't dissolved I don't think we're done with this yet I'm gonna have to put this back up on the heat and add some more aqua regia to this before we filter. See, I can't tell if that's uh, filter paper or precipitate. So we're going to add some more hydrochloric acid. Now what we'll do is add a little bit more nitric acid. Everything's cold here still. And we're going to put the lid on here. Add some heat and start uh, dissolving the rest of our precipitate in this beaker. Before we get going any further, I took my hot plate stirring device apart. I couldn't find anything wrong with it, but I did find that the little bitty egg-shaped stir bar I was using didn't work well. So what I'm gonna do is drop this one in, this longer one, turn the stir bar on now and see if we can get some stirrage going on all right I think we're I see movement is that possible do those stir bars go bad I don't know that little one that I had in there did not work properly so I'm gonna crank the heat on this. And I'm just gonna let this boil down to a syrup again. I've got a heavy charge of aqua regia in there. And uh, we'll just let this go and see what happens. This is about an hour and a half time lapse. And what I'm doing is I have the heat on high. I have the stir bar going. And we're gonna evaporate the solution down to a syrup. And you'll notice the fumes now have cleared up. Notice that that stir bar is working perfectly now. I don't know what happened there. The other smaller stir bar that I had wouldn't turn. So I put this larger one in here with a more forceful magnet and it works just fine. So what we're going to do now is see if we get any nitric fumes to evolve by slowly rehydrating our syrup with hydrochloric acid and I don't see any fume production at all there 
just adding small doses of hydrochloric acid to try to expel the excess nitric now that we've got it evaporated down to a syrup. I think the uh, trick here is the actual evaporation phase. At some point, the fumes in there quit evolving while we're evaporating it down to the syrup. And I think that is what actually drives the excess nitric, if any, from our precious metal solution. Now here I'm rehydrating with the rest of that hydrochloric acid. That was about 100 milliliters hydrochloric acid. I'm putting my hands in there to let the fume hood draw the fumes off that uh, those gloves before I pull them out of there. And now here what we're going to do is we're going to pull it down off the heat and let it cool off. I'm going to check that real good for that precipitate. Make sure there's none of that left. Turn the heat off. I accidentally turned off the stir bar but there's a fan underneath that stir bar and you should leave that thing running while the uh, heating element cools down. I've got it set up to do the filtering here. I've got a filter paper that I've dampened with some hydrochloric acid. And uh, here, let me turn this off. It's got a little fan that cools that motor as this thing cools down. I've let this cool down to ambient temperature, which is about 50 degrees today. Now we're gonna take a look down at the bottom, see if we've got all of our precipitate to dissolve. And I think that we've got it this time. Yeah, I think we're good. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and filter this solution. Well, I'm waiting for this to filter. Got a little beaker here. I'm gonna put a few milliliters of distilled water in it. I'm gonna draw some of this solution up, not much, just a little bit. Add it to the water. And it sure does look like palladium to me. Here's our sample. It's been diluted with uh, some distilled water. I've got some dimethylgloxime in this container right here. If this is palladium, we should see a bright yellow precipitate. If I can get some of this to come out. Well, I couldn't get any to come out of that squeeze bottle, but I do have a little bit of DMG dissolved in water here. We're going to add that We've got palladium in here. We should get a yellow precipitate forming. Might take a minute. I don't see anything right off the bat. We'll just let this set for a second and see what we get. I don't see anything forming in there. Let's uh, reach down in here with a piece of uh, filter paper. do a stannis test and see what that reveals. I see orange for platinum. So it looks like we pretty much got just platinum in this solution, no palladium. I don't know how to test for the other metals, so we're just gonna have to go with the stannis test. I'm gonna reach up here and get a little drop of our solution in a uh, pipette. Add it to this spot plate cavity. Now what we'll do is I've got some ammonia here. I might get a little bit up in the pipette, just a few drops. 
and we're going to neutralize the solution with the ammonia. Let me take some of this out of here now. I don't know what that is. Move it to a different cavity. And I will dilute this with a little still water, just a little bit. Piece now what I'll do is add a drop or two of DMG to this and see what happens. This is supposed to be a test for nickel. Should turn a bright pink if we've got nickel in solution. That's inconclusive. I can't really tell what we've got here. Yeah, if you look at our Stannis test over here, that's got a brownish tint to it or some other color going on other than orange like we would normally see with just platinum in solution. So we've got some other metal in there with it still. Not quite sure what we've got. Some folks have said it might be iridium. Others have said that it might be nickel. Okay, the whole point of this drill was to uh, see if we could get the metal, or get the uh, platinum cleaned up by doing a second precipitation. waiting for that to pull through the filter, what we'll do is prepare some ammonium chloride solution. What I'll do is just dump about 100 grams in here. There's my spoon. Now what we'll do add some distilled water and prepare a saturated solution of ammonium chloride to do another precipitation of our platinum. To, to demonstrate what the palladium reaction is supposed to look like, I've got some palladium solution here tenth of a gram and a hundred milliliters of solution. I'm going to put some of that in our beaker here. And now what we'll do is get some of this DMG. I'm going to add a little bit of it and you'll see that it uh, should precipitate out the uh, yellow palladium precipitate fairly quickly for us to see here. There it is. See that? See that precipitate forming in there? That's what the palladium reaction should look like. It's a very sensitive test for palladium in solution, as opposed to this one. This one doesn't have any palladium, or very little, maybe a trace amount. This one, you can see the precipitate now. It's forming up pretty good for us. Very sensitive test for palladium in solution. Here we go, we've got everything pulled through our filter. Now what we'll do is tra whoops, transfer the solution into our uh, beaker here. Okay, here we go, moment of truth to see whether or not all this trouble that we just went through to do a second precipitation is going to work. Add the ammonium chloride right on in. Here we go. Kind of looks
looks like we got the same result here. Same pink colored precipitate. That's a little bit of a disappointment. I was looking for a little bit of a color change, more towards a yellow color uh, that indicates platinum. We've got our material to settle out now. Still a pink colored precipitate. I'm gonna pour this waste solution off now into this container here. Go. We're going to transfer the precipitate to a uh, corningware dish. Pour it right on in. Let's put our precipitate up here on the heat. do is add some water so that we don't boil and spatter the precipitate out of our container in there well this is going to take some time we try to evaporate off all the solution on that uh, precipitate and uh, get it dried out and then we'll burn the ammonium chloride off of there see if we can get some platinum metal out of this this is about a two and a half hour time lapse you see me reaching in and pulling off some of the liquid by hand and here in a minute, I'm going to put some glass rods underneath that uh, dish that has our material in it so that we can uh, keep it up off the bottom of the uh, platter on the hot plate there so it doesn't spatter. That's about two and a half hours time lapsed. You can see it's a little soupy yet here. So what I'm going to do, I think it'd be okay to set it directly on a hot plate now. Take the water out of the way. I'm going to set it directly on the hot plate, turn the heat down low, and slowly evaporate off the rest of that moisture. This is about a two and a half hour time lapse. And what I'm trying to do is burn all the ammonium chloride off of here and end up with a hand full of material that looks like gray ash that will be platinum sponge and towards the end here you'll be able to see the gray ash down at the bottom of the material close to the dish and what I did is I added a, uh, a lid on top of there to try to capture more of the heat to complete this process. I think I'm going to call it right here. I've been working on this since about 8.30. And it's currently about 10 p.m. I've got a time lapse of the uh, calcining that we did in our bowl there. I cannot seem to get it hot enough to complete the, the burning off all the silver chloride or uh, ammonium chloride. So I covered it up to form a little oven there. Hopefully that'll burn off. It'll get hot enough now and it'll burn off the rest of the uh, ammonium chloride. I mean, I'm getting tired. I've been about 14 hours into this. All these little uh, residues and waste solutions, I'll add all this into my stock pot so that we can cement the precious metals out of these residues and solutions. And this will conclude part two of the bromate 
Platinum Refining Bromate Hydrolysis video. Thank you for watching.